Well, guys, it is official. We've just hit our first $1,000 worth of eBay sales. This is a sale that got us over the line. It was the Nike Air Max Plus, the TNs. We paid $15 in a thrift store for these and we sold them on eBay within 23 days for $60. The cost of goods was 15, so we ended up profiting 25 bucks. If you're new to the channel, I'm basically trying to challenge myself to achieve $5,000 in sales within my first 90 days of selling on eBay. And I've just been pretty pleased with the way things are going so far. We're up to about $642 in revenue within our first three weeks. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to the plan of our, our goal of $700 worth of sourcing and then list up that $700 each week um, to try and continue to generate some sales. Basically in this video, you're gonna watch the entirety of what is week four of this challenge. And it's a really important week, week four, because it's actually the moment where you can start to implement a few things with your store on the existing stock that you've been putting in. Um, so I'm gonna show you all of those little bits and pieces that actually go along to help you generate more sales now that we've got some stock in there. Um, really important steps this week, guys. So stick around to the end of the video uh, and I'll show you how I go about those steps. All right, here's a good one to kick us off, guys. We've got a SpongeBob SquarePants. This is a meant to be a talking figure. It goes for about $60, but I'm always a bit iffy in thrift stores as to whether or not they actually work. I've got to test to see if this thing works. I know we're in store, but I can't help myself. Oh, look, we're both like that up now. He's talking. He's talking. That's a win. Courtney's going to hate me for this, but there are some really good plush toys in this store. This one here, brand new with tags, the Lion King. We've got Pumba. That's awesome. What's he priced at? So it looks like he's worth about $30. So I'm gonna leave him back on the shelf. $10 is just a little bit too much. We've got some DVDs over here. Let's see what we've got. This has got to be one of the craziest things I've ever seen. $2 per disc on TV series. Pretty much just going to have to leave based on that. The Untouchables, the complete series, $50. Unfortunately, the video games weren't as good either. These ones here weren't comping up for any amount of profit. Well guys, it ended up just being me and Spongebob getting out of here because that was one of the most expensive stores I have ever seen. $6 for DVDs, just just crazy. $50 for box sets. Um, yeah, no one of those shelves are full because no one's buying that. So why are they pricing for that? Anyway, first store down, let's get into another one. Now this could be the one, guys. I've got a good feeling about this one. Alright, the moment of truth guys. Let's check out some of these price points. Mm -hmm. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. So let's see what we've got in here. See, this goes for about 25. That's not too bad, $4. That's almost worth it. Here we go. Awesome DVD to find. Married with children as well, that's a really good one too. Five dollars. We might have got lucky here. These are all coming up at two dollars each. And we've got a big collection. So a lot of videos today. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, a popular. Got 29, thank popular you. thing. Just on the card. Yep. All right, so that was pretty good, guys. We've had a, a decent strike there. I paid $29 for everything, and that married with children was gonna go on to sell for about $80. So with the Dragon Ball Z, the Star Wars, we've done really well for $29. I'm really happy with that. Along with SpongeBob, we're slowly building up our day. Hello. How you doing? Not too bad. 
Now these pair of shoes did catch my eye. These are actually a pair of Doc Martens. Deceiving Doc Martens. A pair of brown software as you can see there on the side, but that little Doc Martin uh, airwear uh, was a good giveaway that these were actually gonna be worth quite a bit of money, but the price point in store, 60 bucks. Found some of the rarest titles on PlayStation 2 in here, Singstar. Uh, and then a few Wii games as well, but then this one was probably going to be the best one, Mario Kart on the Nintendo DS, but it is $15, and comps on eBay, you're looking at about $30 to $35, so unfortunately, can't do it. I have just spied some more games up here, some pretty good titles. This one here, though, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, and it's only $4, but this one was going for about $45 on eBay, so... It must have only just hit the shelf. Who remembers watching this show? The Adventures of Blinky Bill, Volume 1. This thing sells for about $20 to $30. And I'm pretty sure we're only going to be paying $2 here in store. I just had a bit of a look uh, through some of these titles just to see if I could find more volumes because this is a really good show. Uh, and I had no idea it was worth this much. So that's a bit of a, a lucky find. <laughs> Any good ones in there, mate? Uh, it's all good ones. Any good ones in, in the tub? <laughs> yeah, all good ones. All good ones? Yeah. Looks like I came at the right time. That was actually the case. He brought out a bunch of really good titles. The first one here, Harry Potter. I'm going to sell this one for $50 and I'm paying just $2 a piece here in store for the Blu-ray prices. That's not too bad. I also found this as well, the 39 Clues. This was a complete box set for 20 bucks, but I reckon I can turn it into 75. There was just one book that I was missing off the comps that I was seeing there. So I did a little bit more digging in the, in the book section and you wouldn't believe it. I've come across the black book, the extra book that we needed for that $75 comp. And I also found the 11th book in the series. So that was huge. We should be able to sell that for a good 85 odd dollars. Well, here's something you want to see. 60% off sale here at One World. Let's see what we can do. All right, the first thing I found was this Game of Thrones board game. It was going for 10 bucks, but there was some pretty gnarly content, so I didn't want to be counting through all of that, so I left it behind. This was a really interesting one as well. We've got some vintage dinosaur toys. You wouldn't believe the comps on eBay for these things. Jamie, the guy that I go to the flea market with, he got me onto this category. Today, these are all priced up between six to eight dollars each, so I did leave it, but it's a pretty cool find. Guys, I am absolutely obsessed with a bit of ice. A banana and some milk. Banana milkshakes. I've, I'll, literally, I'm having like one every single day. Now, I know that I could definitely go ahead and add some peanut butter to it. And believe me, I've wanted to. But I'm just trying to stay as healthy as I possibly can. And uh, for now, it's just the straight banana with a bit of full cream milk and some ice. That's actually the trick. If you don't add the ice, it's just not as good. Uh, all right. Let me just set this up. I wanna show you something cool. So my friend Matt has started a blog post. He's a beginner eBay seller and he's documenting everything in writing, which is so unique because we're always watching these YouTube videos, we're watching people on Instagram, but he's gone down the blog path. He's clearly a writer because I am absolutely sucked into every single thing that he says on a weekly basis. Um, and he's doing really, really well with his eBay journey too. So some great sales are coming in, some awesome advice. Uh, he puts some photos in there, all the statistics around his business numbers. I'm loving it, basically, and I just want to talk about it in this video today and get you guys to go and follow him along as well because I don't think he's got too many people following him and it'd be great to get a bunch more people, um, you know, just jumping on his journey because he's just an honestly, it just seems like a really cool dude and he's having some really good results that'll help you guys out there too. Um, so go and give Flip Weekly a, uh, a quick follow. It is linked in the description below. You can easily find it, easily subscribe, uh, but jump on board. Ripping fella. Now, some sales updates. Well, look, it's been two days into this week four period that we're in at the moment, but last week I left you with 12 sales total. In the last two days, we've added another six sales. So things are starting to really turn over, which I'm very excited about. We've had some good sales come through. Firestarter sold for about 25 bucks. Skylanders Xbox 360, I think we got about $17 from memory on that. Um, Satisfaction though has gone on to sell for $37.95. This is a DVD bundle that Courtney and I picked up for $9 in a thrift nine days ago. Uh, we ended up getting a $60 sale price after fees post cost of goods. We only made $12. 
Um, but I'm not too disappointed about that because we are still trying to get those transactions under our belt. Uh, if we hit 100 transactions ASAP, uh, we're going to get top rated seller status by eBay. Um, so that's what we're gunning for. And I'm really happy to see a profit come through on satisfaction. But I just wanted to break those numbers down for you as well, just to see that yes, we made 60 bucks but we're actually only making 12 in profit. It's a very, very important set of numbers to understand when you're just starting out. Um, we also sold the Hokers. You might remember these. These only had a six-day sell-through rate. They sold really cheaply, to be fair, $75. Um, I say cheaply because I actually listed the second pair that we bought that day into the main store, and I sold that for $130. Um, so that tells me that this $75 sale was definitely undersold. Um, but you know, we still made a $30 profit paying 20 bucks for it in a thrift store. So I'm not disappointed. A six day sell through rate is very, very fast. Um, these were a really good pair of shoes. But today, today we've sold a PlayStation game that we picked up at the flea market a couple of days ago. Um, that was on Sunday, the near um, PlayStation 3 game. I'd actually never heard of this. It's always funny, the ones that you never hear of are always the ones to sell the quickest. Um, this was a dollar into $27. And then we've also had, just recently, uh, we sold the Surf Life Saving shirt that we picked up in episode one. This one had a 22-day sell-through rate, took about three weeks, paid $8 for it, sold it for $39.95, made a $14 profit. So six more sales added to the kitty. We're now up to 18 sales so far, 23 days into this challenge. And I need to go out and do some more thrifting because we're not quite at our $700 that we need for this week. And I'm pretty excited about seeing what we're able to pick up next. To mix things up, I've actually gone ahead and jumped into a cash converters. Always tricky to find profit in here. However, I came across these PlayStation 1 games. We had uh, Crash Bandicoot and Croc. The two crop games were selling for about 120 and then the crash game was selling for about 50 odd dollars. So I thought there was actually some opportunity to profit based on the prices that I was seeing. So I ended up just grabbing the one uh, Crash Bandicoot 3 warped. Uh, the disc was in good condition. The other two, unfortunately, well, you could have maybe got them cleaned up and they would have been okay, but there was a couple of light scratches on them. So I just thought it'd be best interest, considering the price wasn't dirt cheap, um, to go ahead and pass. But one game should turn into 50 bucks. Happy to pay for, what, $19 for it? Now, here's an interesting little action figure find. This is the Lord of the Rings uh, Cave Troll. And I found the completed version that you can see there for $100 on eBay. This guy's basically naked. Um, so I'm thinking about $40 to $50 because he's only partially complete. It's just the figure on its own. But a 2001 rare vintage uh, Lord of the Rings toy. I thought that was good. Um, found some footy shorts as well. These are some great state of origin rugby league shorts. Um, you're generally getting about $35 to $40 on these, and I think they should be a pretty quick seller. So to pay $6 in a thrift store is just brilliant. Uh, and then I also found some more DVDs. We've done really well in media this week. Um, Storage Wars, I've got six different episodes here, or six different collections, I should say. This is quite a large bundle, and it should sell for about $45 to $50. Um, picking this up for $2 a piece in store, so that's not too bad either. I honestly just bought this because I like the pattern of it. We've got a billabong jacket here. This is actually reversible as well, so you can turn it inside out. It's only $12, it's a men's medium. Like I said, I just like the print and sometimes that's the way I like to do my thrifting. Um, so given this was in really good condition, I'm gonna actually try and price this up for about 45 to 50. It retails for 100. I've just found this guys and I don't know anything about it, but the comps are telling me I should maybe consider it. It's a lacrosse helmet. And it's priced here in store at $20. There it is there. So I've never sold or never purchased a lacrosse helmet before. The brand is Cascade. Any lacrosse players out there that might be watching this, uh, let me know what you think I might be able to turn this one into. Super strong weekend of sales in the second store. Um, we had these come through. These are the Nike TNs that I picked up in a thrift store. You might have remembered, I think it was episode one or two and I paid $15. Well, we got a $60 sale price in the end for these. And I'm not too disappointed about that because you could get probably about 100 to 120 if they're in better condition. Um, but these have definitely had some wear. So I'm happy to drop the price a little bit. Remember, we are after transactions in this second, in this second store. So um, the fact that we are able to get 60 bucks towards our 5,000. Um, is awesome on that sale. Um, we had a couple of video games that sold as well. And um, these were all bought, remember Courtney in that um, thrift store upstairs where we were getting those cheap DVDs and video games? Yes. 
This one was one that you found in CompTAR. That's right. Lost Planet 3. Uh, we got a $38 sale price on that one there. And then we yep. also had Donkey Kong Returns. Um, this one I actually think we grabbed off Selwyn, I want to say. Yeah. I think it was off Selwyn. Um, that one sold for $25. So the sell through rate on this, super fast. Lost Planet was really quick as well. I'm putting all the details up on screen, hopefully. Uh, if editor Matt did his job correctly. Um, and then the last one is the longest sell-through rate that we've had so far because these were bought right at the very beginning of the challenge. Um, these are the new jeans. We got a very cheap $27 sale price on these. Still sold fairly cheap, but we did make a profit from it. Uh, and that was the fourth sale from this weekend. So Courtney's about to go ahead and help me out by putting them into the mailbag. But we're adding some significant revenue for our $5,000 goal. <laughs> All right, this is one of the most important parts of this video, I think, today. It is gonna be taking you through some little sales tactics that you can do to boost your sales once you've got a few items in your store. You might have your first 40 listings like I do. You might have a couple of hundred. Whatever the case may be, this is a really important thing to be doing. I would say maybe, maybe two to three times a week. You could do it daily if you wanted to, but I just think every now and again is a good way to go about it. Um, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna to go, to go into the listings tab and then you're gonna get a full list and you just wanna go across and just check out what time is actually left on the listing. And as you can see here, we've only got an hour and a half left on this one and then about 36 minutes left on the one that's gonna be ending soonest. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna give it a fresh listing. It automatically rolls over every 30 days, but to make it a fresh listing when we renew it, we just wanna manipulate the price points ever so slightly. So I'm just gonna go through all of these listings here and I'm just gonna move them from 1995 to 1895. These Australia team issue swim shorts, I'm actually gonna drop them down to $45. And then these shoes, I'm gonna make $49.95. So, so now basically they've had their lap around the sun now. It's pretty much been an entire month that these listings have been with us. And we wanna go ahead and refresh them and make them look like they've basically just been uploaded for the very first time. It just stands a better chance of getting more impressions and more page views. So if we go to end listings up there under the actions tab, and we're actually gonna delete them, which sounds quite scary, but trust me, it's not, because all we need to do is go up here to listings, and then we click on the button ended, just this one right here. And then from there, you've got your list that you ended just literally just then. So you go ahead and click sell similar, this button up the top here, and that will allow you to just go ahead and submit all down the bottom right hand corner here, submit all five, and we'll hit submit. So what that's doing here is it's now uploading five brand new listings with brand new item numbers, and we're gonna stand a better chance with a lower price point and a fresh listing to hopefully get these items sold. So you don't need to be doing it with every single one of your listings, but every now and again, I recommend doing that step right there. As you saw, it only took a couple of minutes, but it will have a dramatically good effect on your eBay account. Now this next step is even easier. This is going into your watches page and just manipulating the price points on the most watched items in your store. What happens then is your um, watches will get a, a notification to say that you've dropped your price. It needs to be at least 5% for the notification to go out to that potential buyer. Um, but they're gonna get an alert that there's been a price drop on something that they were previously interested in. And therefore, you're gonna stand a better chance to making the sale. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've found uh, five listings. There were three that had two watches, one that had one, uh, three watches, and then one that had six watches. So I've actually just gone ahead and I've dropped the price on all of those, and my job is done. There's nothing, there's no additional extra steps there. Uh, it's just simply dropping the price, and that notification will then go out to those buyers, and hopefully, we can pick up some more sales. All right, time to recap the week that was. Four weeks in, starting from scratch. We are doing this for a total of 13 weeks. So we're kind of a third of the way through. Um, pleasingly though, we have seen a really large increase in revenue. Uh, we had $487 come through this week. Uh, 13 sales ended up coming through. We did dip a little bit. Well, actually 30% dip. We went down to $37 worth of an average sale price. Um, we just weren't buying those $50 plus items every single purchase, but we were still buying really good sell-through rate items. So 
you know, while the 3747 definitely isn't my goal, I'm still happy to see the volume of sales coming through to help us hit $487. Um, fees are coming in at 17% because we are still getting quite a number of promoted listings. But, you know, the fact that we're only able to have $642 after the first three weeks, um, to then be able to smash the fourth week with 487 in the one week, um, Incredible stuff. So overall, let's have a look at what the picture of the last four weeks now looks like. All right, so here it is here, $1,130 in revenue after 28 days of selling on eBay. Um, still holding that 17% in selling fees, uh, $45.20 because of that 37 this week. Um, it has caused our overall average to dip to 45. So I'd really like to make sure that when I'm when I'm doing that $700 next week in week five, I really want to make sure that I'm just gra grabbing those really high ticket items only and say no to those 15, like Blinky Bill. I shouldn't have bought Blinky Bill as much as it was a good DVD. The listing's only $15, $20. I shouldn't be putting that into this store. That's not the game plan. Um, quantity sold, we are up to 25 sales. So we've literally more than doubled our store in one week. We basically did what we did in three weeks in one week. So... Yeah, consistency compounds. That's probably the biggest takeaway that I've got for you guys. If you just stick with it, just come up with a game plan, be active on eBay. You know, four weeks in, we're starting to see some really good numbers. So, you know, I think we're about 22, 23% of the way there, but we have, for the first time in this series, we've actually surpassed the goal revenue target for the week, um, which is really, really good. But the biggest thing that I wanted to take you guys in on is how we're looking from a, a spreadsheet perspective, because I've got a big running spreadsheet of every single item. I've got the sell-through rate. I've got the eBay fees. I've got the postage, the sales tax, the profit, you name it. It's all in this spreadsheet. But the coolest stat out of this entire thing is that we are now profitable. For the very first time, we have a net profit of $100. So that is super, super exciting. Um, we're over here on profit on the items that we've sold of $473. However, obviously, we've spent $585 on stock. So... Look, at the end of the day, there we are there with a $100 net profit. That will probably be evaporated when we go out and buy more stock next week. But it's really cool to see that we are in that position, you know, four weeks in. We're basically recouping our money back, building up some good stock in the account. And uh, yeah, we're in a position of strength, I think, moving into week five.